In the beginning, all the matter and energy in the universe was squeezed into an unimaginably small, dense point, smaller than anything that we can picture. Physicists think that it was possibly infinitely dense. Time and space as we know them did not exist. This is what scientists call a singularity, a place where our current laws of physics break down. The singularity then began to expand and inflate space everywhere, violently fast. It was not an explosion as is commonly thought. The time period occurring before the first 10 trillionth of a yocto second after the singularity state is known as the Planck era. Physicists estimate the Planck era reached mind-boggling temperatures of around 180 trillion quintillion degrees Fahrenheit. However, this is purely theoretical. No one can measure it directly. The universe was essentially a point of extreme density and smaller than an atom by an almost inconceivable factor. Classical ideas of distance and time did not apply. The universe was estimated to be around trillion, 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 a nonillion times smaller than an atom. However, the universe was a non-zero length, as opposed to its previous singularity point state where space and time did not exist yet. This non-zero length is referred to as the Planck length and is named after Max Planck, a German physicist whose experiments in the late 19th century involved measuring emitted light from a vessel with a tiny hole. These experiments led him to discover that energy comes in tiny, discrete packets. This was a massive breakthrough at the time, as it eventually helped define the smallest meaningful scales of space and time. The Planck era was a time and place so short and with conditions so extreme that our current knowledge of physics cannot describe what occurred. Physicists currently seek out a theory of quantum gravity in order to accurately describe the state of the universe during this era. However, scientists do think that gravity, the strong and weak nuclear force, and electromagnetism were unified due to the exceedingly high temperatures present just after the Big Bang. This unified force is referred to as the superforce. Quantum fluctuations during this era slightly stretched or compressed space itself. In quantum physics, energy is never perfectly still. Even in empty space, tiny amounts of energy randomly appear in and out of existence. These tiny random variations in energy are called quantum fluctuations. Every tiny change in the space itself during this era mattered because the universe was so tiny. In other words, any tiny variation at this point would be significant later when space expanded to macroscopic scales. For example, the fluctuating regions became areas of slightly higher or lower density, which over billions of years would coalesce under gravity to form stars, galaxies, and clusters. Towards the end of the Planck era, Gravity broke away, leaving the three remaining forces still united and full of energy that would soon drive the expansion of the universe. Physicists think that certain symmetries of the superforce became unstable, causing gravity to decouple from it. This could be like a phase transition, such as water freezing to ice. A 10 trillionth of a yocto second after the Big Bang, the Grand Unified Theory Era began. The universe was roughly the size of a proton, or smaller, and around 1.8 octillion degrees Fahrenheit. The space within this incredibly tiny area had a lot of built-in energy. It could stay in this state temporarily, but it was not the lowest possible energy state. Its state was akin to a ball, sitting in a shallow valley on a hilltop. It may look stable, but it could roll down at any moment to a lower energy valley. When the grand unified forces separated from gravity towards the end of the Planck era, the system rolled down from its somewhat stable state and built up energy was released. The push was not like an explosion into pre-existing space. Instead, it expanded space itself, making distances grow exponentially in a tiny fraction of a second. a hundred billionth of a yocto second after the Big Bang, part of the universe 
In other words, the part that would expand to become what we know as the observable universe of today, expanded from billions of times smaller than a proton to something between the size of a marble and an American football field. Space expanded exponentially. It even expanded faster than the speed of light. This actually does not break any laws of physics as space itself was expanding. This set the stage for everything that followed. The strong nuclear force also split from the grand unified force at the beginning of this era as well. While the sudden jump in the size of the universe may seem very small given the current scale of the universe, the expansion rate of the universe during this era was staggering compared to the slower growth afterwards. Scientists estimate that the temperature in the universe at this moment was 1,800 trillion trillion degrees Fahrenheit. Physicists often use an inflating balloon to explain cosmic inflation. Imagine drawing dots on the surface of a deflated balloon, with each dot representing a galaxy. As the balloon inflates, the surface stretches, and the distances between all the dots increase equally. Importantly, the dots themselves are not moving. It's the balloon's surface, representing space, that expands. In our three-dimensional universe, the same idea applies. As space itself expands, every region of space gets farther from every other region, even though no specific point is the center of the expansion. After inflation began, we can only accurately describe the diameter of the universe as it pertains to the diameter of the observable universe, the region from which light has been able to reach us since the Big Bang. The universe beyond this boundary may be vastly larger, or even infinite, but its full extent remains unknown. Even towards the end of the inflation era, a mere hundred millionth of a yoctosecond after the Big Bang, the observable universe was only a mere 33 feet in diameter. But despite this, the universe as a whole beyond was already likely infinite in size. Inflation, during the inflation era, rapidly expanded space and stretched quantum fluctuations in the energy fields. Those stretched fluctuations seeded the conditions that allowed particles to form once inflation ended and the universe cooled a bit. Inflation also smoothed out irregularities and is why the universe is now flat on large scales. However, this does not mean the universe of today is a two-dimensional plane. It means that the geometry of space-time itself is nearly flat and not curved in any meaningful way. For example, Assuming no objects obstruct them, two parallel light beams traveling forever in space will never touch each other or curve. A hundred millionth of a yoctosecond after the Big Bang, the quark era began. The universe slowed its explosive inflation phase and entered into a rapid expansion. This era saw vast numbers of quark and anti-quark pairs forming from energy. At each moment the energy created a particle, the energy also simultaneously created an antiparticle. These particles then went off on their separate ways, moving about. Gluons and other more exotic particles also appeared. At this time, the universe is thought to have been a soup of fundamental particles and antiparticles. A chaotic and free-flowing quark-gluon plasma that was constantly interacting with itself. Quarks are fundamental particles that make up the protons and neutrons inside of an atomic nucleus, and gluons are particles that hold together the quarks. However, due to the high temperatures, the quarks could not connect to form protons or neutrons, and as a result, they moved about wildly in a dense plasma of free quarks, gluons, and leptons. Quarks frequently collided with antiquarks, resulting in annihilation. However, because the soup of particles was so hot, new quarks were still continuously created from the surrounding energy, resulting in a cycle of creation and destruction. Other particles may have been present that no longer exist or are difficult to detect, such as gravitons, which are hypothetical gravity-carrying particles, and Higgs bosons, which are also hypothetical and which impart mass to other particles. One femtosecond after the Big Bang, one of the particles that are thought to have existed was a very high mass particle called the X boson, along with its own antiparticle called the anti X boson. The X boson and its antiparticle were not stable and decayed into other particles and antiparticles, such as quarks, 
antiquarks, electrons, and positrons. A strange aspect of the X boson and its antiparticle pair are that when they decayed, they produced a small amount of particles over antiparticles, around a billion and one particles to each billion antiparticles. When these were all later annihilated, a small amount of particles remained. Scientists hypothesize that these surviving particles led to all the matter currently in the universe. One picosecond after the Big Bang, the observable universe had inflated to around 620,000 miles in diameter and was about 1.8 million trillion degrees Fahrenheit. The increases in size decreased temperatures in the universe to a point that allowed the strong nuclear force to split away from the electroweak force. Near the end of the quark era, one nanosecond after the Big Bang, the electroweak force separated into the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force. From then on, the forces of nature and physical laws were as they are now experienced. Particle-antiparticle pairs, which included quark-antiquark pairs, were still constantly forming and returning to energy. For each type of particle, the temperature dropped to the point where the particles froze out, meaning that they could no longer form from the background pool of energy. At this point, most free particles and antiparticles of each type were rapidly annihilated, leaving a small residue of particles. This residual amount began grouping to form heavier particles. One microsecond after the Big Bang, the Hadron era began. By the start of the era, the observable universe had inflated to around 60 billion miles in diameter and was around 18 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. Within the plasma, there were quarks, antiquarks, and gluons mixed with vast quantities of radiant energy and photons. These temperatures were cool enough for quarks to begin combining to form particles called hadrons from among the seething soup. A hadron is any particle made of quarks held together by the strong nuclear force. Baryons, which include protons and neutrons, antibaryons and mesons, are all made up of quarks. Quarks and antiquarks combined in twos and threes to form heavier particles in a process called quark confinement. Quarks combine with gluons to form protons and neutrons. There are six flavors of quarks. Up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. An up quark has a charge of plus two over three. A down quark has a charge of minus one over three. A proton is equivalent to two up quarks and one down quark, which altogether has a charge of plus one. A neutron has one up quark and two down quarks, with a charge of zero. Mesons consist of one quark and one antiquark, and are what make up peons. Mesons are unstable and decay really quickly. Antibaryons consist of three antiquarks and are essentially the antiparticle of a baryon. All of these hadrons that formed during this era either quickly decayed or were annihilated. Throughout the hadron era, protons and neutrons constantly converted into each other via the weak nuclear force. For example, a neutron would often become a proton plus electron plus antineutrino particle through beta decay, and a proton and an electron would often become a neutron plus neutrino particle through electron capture. This all occurred until the universe cooled enough to freeze their identities in place. One millisecond after the Big Bang, the lepton era occurred. The observable universe had grown to around 600 billion miles in diameter and was about 1,800 billion degrees Fahrenheit. During this era, leptons were very numerous. A lepton is a general name for electrons, neutrinos, and their antiparticles. Leptons do not take part in the strong force that binds quarks together. Instead, they interact via the weak force, gravity, and electromagnetism. Leptons dominated the energy density of the universe during this era. These particles were constantly being annihilated and being created in collisions with photons. Despite near-perfect symmetry, a tiny excess of electrons over anti-electrons survived. This initial asymmetry is what allowed the later formation of atoms and ordinary matter. Neutrinos decoupled from the rest of matter. This meant that they could travel freely through space. 
This formed the cosmic neutrino background and is analogous to the cosmic microwave background, which was the strongest initial evidence of the Big Bang detected by scientists in the 1960s. One second after the Big Bang, the nucleosynthesis era began. The observable universe during this era was still around 600 billion miles in diameter, like the lepton era, but the temperature still cooled down further to 18 billion degrees Fahrenheit. Neutrons gradually converted into protons as the universe cooled, but when there was about one neutron for every seven protons, most remaining neutrons combined with protons to make helium nuclei, of which each consisted of two protons and two neutrons. 100 seconds after the Big Bang, collisions between protons and neutrons began forming tiny amounts of other atomic nuclei, such as helium-3, which consists of two protons and one neutron, lithium, which consists of three protons and four neutrons, and deuterium, which consists of one proton and one neutron. These reactions finished within two to three minutes. By that time, the nuclei of 98% of today's helium atoms had formed. Neutrons are inherently unstable, so the clock was ticking, and therefore they only had minutes to combine before decaying. This limited the production of heavier elements in this era. The reactions also mopped up all the free neutrons. These processes are why the universe today is about 75% hydrogen and 25% helium by mass. Towards the middle part of the nucleosynthesis era, the observable universe inflated to around 10 light years in diameter. By this point, the universe was a hot plasma where atomic nuclei floated in a sea of free electrons. Two hundred seconds after the Big Bang, the opaque era began. During this era, the universe was about 180 million degrees Fahrenheit. During this relatively lengthy era, the ocean of matter particles, comprising mainly of electrons, protons, and helium nuclei, were in a continual state of interaction with photons, or in other words, radiant energy. This had the effect of making the universe foggy. During this time, if one hypothetically was wearing a spacesuit that was able to withstand the 180 million degrees Fahrenheit conditions that existed during this era, one would only see a blinding and featureless white light all around. It would have been like staring into a glowing fog of pure light with no shapes or colors. This glowing opaqueness was caused by trapped photons bouncing around intensely. For hundreds of thousands of years after the Big Bang, the universe was opaque as it continued to expand and to cool. However, despite the cooling, it was still too energetic for atoms to form. If any electrons momentarily met with protons or helium nuclei, they were quickly split apart by photons, which were themselves trapped in a process of continual collision with free electrons. This scattering of photons by electrons meant that the photons could not travel far in any direction in a straight line. 378,000 years after the Big Bang, the recombination era began. The temperature of the universe at this point had decreased to about 4,940 degrees Fahrenheit. The observable universe was about 84 million light years in diameter. The universe had now cooled enough for electrons to lose enough energy so they could be captured by nuclei. This allowed neutral hydrogen and neutral helium atoms to form for the first time. About nine hydrogen atoms were made for each helium atom. A few lithium and deuterium atoms also formed. Once electrons were bound, there were far fewer free electrons for photons to scatter off of. With electrons locked up in atoms, photons could finally move freely through space. This decoupling of matter and radiation is what created the cosmic microwave background, or CMB, we see today. The literal first light of the universe. At this point, the universe instantly became transparent compared to before. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed my documentary, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash world chronicles.